with our discussion on the unit 3 under wealth management and this is going to be an extensive unit talking primarily about uh, what mutual funds are and what is the importance of mutual funds in the context of wealth management. This is probably one of the most important topics that we are going to cover and uh, the crux of a large chunk of investing that happens for any individual happens around mutual funds. Mutual funds are important because of multiple reasons. One, they offer an opportunity to kind of go and invest across asset classes. You could invest in equity, you could invest in debt. And uh, they are uh, simpler, uh, easily accessible instruments which may not require too much expertise to go ahead and invest into. Right. So that's how mutual funds are. That's what mutual funds are. And we're going to kind of understand the concept of what a mutual fund is and then try and extend that concept as we go along in terms of understanding us how, how do we select a mutual fund, how do we rate a mutual fund, what kind of mutual funds are available and what are some of the key terminologies that are available when looking at mutual funds, right? So let's first understand the concept of a mutual fund, right? Let's say we have an investor with, uh, with 3000 rupees uh, to invest, right? And uh, we have read that diversification gives you a good risk adjusted portfolio, but that may not just not be possible with a 3000 rupee uh, kitty to go ahead and invest, right? Now he looks at a few stocks. He looks at TCS, which is at 2700. He looks at Maruti, which is at 4900. He looks at M&M, which is, uh, which is uh, 1400, right? And he realizes that uh, practically he can either buy one share of TCS or buy two shares of m and and because shares technically cannot be purchased in fractions, he cannot buy anything of Maruti even if he wants to, right? Now that's that's a big issue because this person even though is aware of the reality that a diversified portfolio is good, how can he create a diversified portfolio? It's just not possible in uh, with, with such a little amount of money. Now, so there are two options. Option one is basically you have enough money, right? So you wait till 3,000 probably grows to something like 3 lakhs and then invest, right? So you do not invest anything till then because you'll not be able to create a diversified portfolio till then and then you invest, right? That's not a great idea because you are delaying investments for an individual and that's uh, that's always not advisable. Uh, so the idea is how can you solve this problem? Now think about it. There would be a lot of investors like this, right? There are many such investors who have only 3000 rupees to invest small capital amounts to invest. They cannot buy stocks. They don't know about stocks. They should not be taking that risk. They want to create diversified portfolios, but, uh, but they don't have uh, the expertise or the access to markets, right? There are many such investors who have small capital amounts to invest. So does that ring a bell? Does that give a solution to us? Is there an availability of a solution for us? What happens if let's say there is a fund manager, there is this gentleman who uh, who can uh, boast of a lot of expertise around stock markets. Uh, the gentleman walks in and says, why don't I add the funds that you give? In other words, I will create a pool of money, right? I will pool the monies that you give me and thereby I will have 3000 plus 3000 plus 3000 that gives me total 9000 to invest, right? So this guy comes in, he says, why don't you give your money to me to manage? I am an expert. I have uh, I have uh, tracked stock markets for a long, long period. And I think I can do a good job in terms of looking at your investments well. So all the three guys agree, they combine their money. So 3000 plus 3000 plus 3000 becomes 9000 and total 9000 rupees is available to invest. Now, what can we do with 9000 rupees? Technically, the 9,000 rupees would add up to the three amounts which are given here, which is essentially one share of TCS, one share of Maruti and one share of m &M. So practically, you can use the 9,000 rupees and then purchase these three shares, each of them. So now the portfolio consists of one share of TCS, Maruti and m &M, correct? With this in the portfolio, effectively, who owns this portfolio? each of those three investors. So let's name them A, B and C. So the actual ownership of this portfolio of three stocks, one each of Maruti, TCS and m and Mahindra and Mahindra is with these three gentlemen, these three investors, correct? Now, how does it work? Essentially, what happens is you create a portfolio and effectively these 
these investors put together 